the late 2000s, the Korean Basketball League tried to widen its pool of talented players by introducing the naturalized athlete system, where athletes with Korean roots were drafted. One of them was Lee Sung Jun, who had been playing under his American name, Eric Sandrin, as, as a foreign player. E, who was also drafted for the Korean national team, is now retired from the KBL, but not from basketball. Now playing three-on-three basketball together uh, with his brother, they're aiming for next year's Tokyo Olympics, which will be the first time three-on-three basketball will appear at the Olympics. To tell us more about that and his personal story, we welcome Lee Sung Jun to our studio for this week's Touch Base in Seoul. Hello, and thank you for coming in today. Oh, thank you for having me. So what have you been up to in these days? I read that you came back from a stay in Romania, went through two weeks of quarantine in August. Right. I mean, I can definitely honestly tell you that anyone who's gone through the quarantine system doesn't want to do it again. So <laughs> yeah, this past summer, we did four weeks in quarantine, two weeks in Romania, two weeks here, mm. and uh, now just trying to get back to normal life. When you say you were in Romania, you were training? Uh, no, I went out there with my, um, with, my, with my wife. I went out there with her. Because she's from Romania. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Went there to visit family and then also to train. Hmm. And then uh, coming back, yeah, coming back home. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your beginnings in basketball. How did you start when you were younger? Um, we started because my dad was a was a basketball player. You know, it was the the, the sport he always had on TV, hmm. uh, had books around the house and whatnot. Hmm. So, you know, everything, every little kid kind of looks up to their dad. And <laughs> we were definitely no different. And where was this? Um, in Seattle. Okay, Seattle. the U.S. Right, so, you know, my dad was a... Um, Met my mom in the military when he was out here in the 70s and uh, played basketball for the Army team when he was here. Mm. So, you know, looking through old scrapbooks and whatnot, see my dad play basketball and pictures that definitely uh, lit the fire on us at a young age. So you played from a young age, but then there must have been a step up into continuing into college and then professionally. Right. I mean, when you're young in the States, it's, um, they don't really have like a club system. It's just you, you know, play with your friends, your brother, your dad mm. in the park, whatever. Then when you start to get up to high school, um, at least at that time, it started when it get a little more serious. And then you start looking at universities. And then, you know, if you're decent in university, you think about going pro. And that was kind of the step that we took after that. And then what brought you to Korea? Um, well, interestingly enough, like the, the Yonsei um, University head coach approached my mom when we were in high school and was like, hey, like I heard these, there's these Korean boys in, in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about sending them to Yonsei? We're a really good school. Mm. My mom was like, oh, yeah, but I don't know. She kind of had her, her qualms about that. Mm. So she wanted to have us go through the American university system, so we did that. So the first time we actually heard about Korean basketball was at that time. And then later on, um, I was playing professionally in Europe, and uh, we kept on hearing like news of the KBL, of the draft, and about the league out here. And um, agents kept on contacting us, and finally, after a dozen phone calls, we said, all right, let's give it a shot. And it wasn't just yourself, it was with your brother as well, right? Yeah, actually, my agent at that time, I was uh, trying out for the NBA at that time, and my mm. agent was like, hey, you want to go to Korea? And I was like, you know, I'm going to give the NBA a shot, you know? Mm-mm. And uh, But I was like, hey, my brother's uh, working at a bank in Seattle. I was like, and he's a good basketball player. I'm sure you wouldn't be hard to convince him to go. <laughs> my brother gave him a call, quit a job at the bank, and then went. Wow. And so my brother... So- so he had like a budget, a burgeoning career, right. and then he gave that up because he wanted to play basketball. Right. Now he uh, he had just started there; was doing really well. Mm. Um, this was before the financial crisis, so it was probably good timing that he left. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, he uh, he took the call from the agent, dropped everything, and then uh, went he to Korea. He played up till college at that point as well, right? He played a year professionally in Germany, uh, okay, but then okay. was kind of thinking he's like, I have a finance degree, you know, mm-hmm. probably put that to to good use. So he went back to the states and started working. But the the fire didn't really die in him, so my agent called him at the right time when mm-hmm. he was thinking about his career, and then he uh, decided to, to hang up his uh, suit and come to Korea and play basketball. Right, and then you eventually end up following him to Korea then, is that how it right. worked out? Right. So I was, uh, my, my tryout in the NBA went through training camp and whatnot, played a couple games, and then I went back to Europe, and my brother was like, bro, you got to come to Korea, it's awesome out here. <laughs> and I was like, really? Tell me about it. And like my brother at that time had just played first, his first couple games with the national team, mm. and was telling me how amazing it was, and... Everything I was hearing about it, I was like, what am I doing in Europe? I need to go to Korea. So I left and came out here. And then when you came here, what was it like? Was it everything you expected? Um, Was it everything he told you about, about how how great it was? I mean, absolutely. Like, the experience out here has been life-changing. You know, I mean, mean, we were still here. You know, four years after we retired, I'm still living here. I mean, I love Korea, and it's Mm. been so good to me. And uh, the way the fans are, the way basketball was, and how it helped me as a player, and the opportunities it presented with me, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed. Right, and you ended up playing for the national team as well. Right. What was that like? Oh, I mean, it, you know, only two experiences in my basketball career are probably like that, that memorable. And 
you know, like obviously playing with my brother all the way through the pros was was one of those things. Mm. And then having the chance to to put that uniform on and represent my mother's country, uh, it's just an experience I'll never forget. After retiring from the KBL, though, you again wore the Korean flag, but this time for the three on three basketball. How did that come about? Yeah, you know, I honestly, after I retired, I um, I never thought I'd put on that uniform again. You know, and um, after three on three basketball became you know like a pretty popular sport, and then it got you know um, into the Olympic Games. You know, there were tournaments and everything going up, and you know, uh, some of my guys I formerly played basketball with were calling me and they're like, hey, Hyung, you want to come and play? And I was like, tell me about this 3-on-3 three thing. They're like, oh, we can play the National League, we can go to the World Cup, we can do this and that. And I was like, yeah, it sounds fun. You know, because when we started playing in the States, um, when we were young on the streets, we played 3-on-3 three three basketball quite a bit. Hmm. And the FIBA game is a little bit different, but um, a lot of the same principles are there. And it's just fun. It's outdoor, they have a DJ. I mean, it's, 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 it's like a lot of fun, you know? <laughs> and so to have fun again, playing with my friends, and then mm. later on my brother, and then some of the other guys that we retired with, like, oh, I mean, it's, it's just a great, great sport. Some might say you've retired. You should enjoy your retired life, but you <laughs> keep on playing sports. I mean, I guess you didn't want to give up then. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, after I retired, I was like, you know, maybe I'll just take some time and relax. And, you know, I went to school out here um, mm. to try to get my Korean a little bit better because it's not so good. It probably <laughs> should be better. But, um, you know, doing some certain things to, like, enhance myself just mentally and then taking time for myself to relax because we played for a long time. But the game just kept on calling. And so my friends were like, hey, you want to play? And I said, why not? I mean, I still love it. I can still play. And, I won't, probably won't be able to play when I'm 60, so I might as well play when I'm, when I'm you know, right now. <laughs> I saw in another interview how uh, you and some of the other players in, who used to be KBL professionals, they enjoyed the fact they were playing in 3-on-3 three three because there was less pressure than right. being a professional professional athlete. Right, I mean, like there's a lot of, I mean, in any job, you know, it's, it, it's a job. And if you're a professional, there's certain stresses and responsibilities that come along with it. And at, being an athlete's no different. But then when you can actually get back to why you're doing it, like the reason that you started like just with your friends going to the park and having fun like that kind of sometimes can get lost in the course of professional work and to actually have you know like a long career where we're playing and and you're know, doing three four practices a day and then to go from just calling your buddies up and be like hey you want to play this weekend and then having your friends get together like it was a welcome change it was a lot of fun what's the appeal for three on three basketball you said it's a lot of fun but how is it different from uh regular five on five team basketball I mean, I think um, most noticeably, if you watch it, like it's a half-court game. Mm. Um, the shot clock is 12 seconds as opposed to 24, so the game's pretty fast. It's only 10 minutes long, and they play at 21, so it's either the first team to 21 points or the leading team after 10 minutes. So it's a really, really quick game. There's no coaches, so you can substitute anytime you want. And really, like, it's you can do all the exciting things that, like all the highlights that you want to see in a full game where mm. you've got to wait maybe an hour and a half for, <laughs> you can see in 10 minutes. So it's like you get like a real short burst of, of energy, excitement, mm. highlights. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's fun to play and it's really fun to watch. Does that make you perhaps not miss the KBL? Um, I don't miss practice in the KBL. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the games. The games are fun because mm. the fans out here are like absolutely outstanding. Like I've played all over the world and I can honestly say that Korean fans are some of the best I've ever played in front of. How is the three-on-three three scene here in Korea currently? I understand it only started in 2017. Right. I mean, it's a pretty it's a pretty young sport here in Korea still. Um, you know, other leagues around the world have been going for quite some time, and uh, our level's gotten a lot better from when I first started till now. I mean, it's it's improved night and day, and I think it'll continue to do that. I mean, like uh, the sportsmen here in this country, you know, the athletes take everything pretty seriously, and if they want to get better, they usually do. So I'm not surprised it's gotten better. Right, and South Korea is preparing for the Tokyo Olympics. It was, of course, meant to happen this year, but because right. of the pandemic, everything's been pushed back, including the qualifiers. Right. How's that situation like for you? I mean, it was difficult last year. They were supposed to have the qualifiers in India, and uh, we were preparing for it and everything, and then it, it wasn't sure if it was going to go. And then they, they rescheduled it now for Europe, I think, in the coming months sometime. You know, I mean, it's it's a huge thing. I mean, the Korean men's basketball team hasn't been to the Olympic Games since 1996. Mm. You know, and the, the women have been doing a great job of representing our country with with pride and doing extremely well in the Olympics. But mm. you know, the men, we haven't been there in a long time. And mm. three on three is an interesting thing where you know there's no LeBron James or Kobe Bryant in in three <laughs> on three. So there's you know I think we can fight, and if we put together a good team, like I think we will, we can we have a good chance of qualifying. Right. You, I was going to ask about that. So is there a good chance of qualifying? And then once you do, what's the competition like? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the experience level at the at the top level, I mean, you have America who's putting some ex-NBA guys in there. Mm. The, their, their team is pretty formidable. They they beat us pretty handily at the World Cup in Amsterdam last year. 
And then you got, you know, Serbia, you have like Latvia, like some teams that aren't necessarily maybe like known for basketball, but are really, really good at this game. Mm. So, I mean, you get to that top level, the guys are really good. You know, like they're probably guys you've never heard of, but they're good at this game. But our players, you know, we're technically sound, we're fast, and we're learning the game like really quickly, like a little behind like some of these top countries. But I mean, in 10 minutes, anything can happen. So, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll put our guys up there against the best guys in the world for sure. Sure. And. You've been doing this for three years now, right? You said for four three, years. Three? Now, yeah. Four years right. now. How long do you want to keep on doing this for? As you said, you don't, you know, you can't do it when you're sixty, but it seems right. like uh, you're still going strong. Yeah, I'm trying. I mean, I've been fortunate. My body's holding up pretty well. You know, I'm not young. I'm 43 now, but um, yeah, I mean, as long as my body holds up, I'll play. I mean, it's. Uh, I definitely prefer to play basketball than go get on a treadmill or a bike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And finally, any messages for any sports fans waiting to see you back on the court? No, I mean, like, I think everyone's under the same thing. You know, everyone's hoping sports will come back soon. And, mm. But, you know, the biggest thing now is, is health. And I think that the sports leagues around the country are doing a really, really good job of, of thinking about that and the fan safety as well. And, uh, you know, as soon as things are, are, are safer, I think that they'll, they'll put this game back out there. And I hope the fans that are listening will, will come out and watch. Well, we wish you the best of luck while you prepare for Tokyo at the Olympics. It's been great to have you on the show. I've been speaking to... Three on three basketball star Isung Jun, thank you for coming in and speaking to us today. Thank you for having me on.